Welcome to the basic physics subject. My name is Dr. Wayne Rollins, and I've been researching and teaching physics for more than a decade now. I really enjoy physics, and I'm hoping as you work through this subject, you'll start to enjoy some of the aspects of physics as well. Uh, some people, when they first think about physics, have this idea that it's a kind of technical, strange pursuit that's done by, by people in lab coats in, in strange buildings, and that really couldn't be further from the truth. What physics really is about is looking at the world around us, the universe around us, and trying to describe what we see and understand how it works. Uh, and this can go from the very, very large scale, things like, like black holes and galaxies, and understanding how the universe as a whole exists, right down to the very, very small scale, looking at atoms, or even smaller than atoms, the, the, the little particles that, that exist on a scale that's very, very hard to imagine. And of course, everything in between. So things that we interact with on our everyday basis. Uh, and we're going to be looking at some of these things in this, in this subject, some of these basic things, uh, covering from how things move to different kinds of waves, including sound, electricity and magnetism, and light and how we use light in all sorts of optical instruments. Um, what you've got to be doing while you're going through this subject is you've got to be thinking, uh, how does this actually make sense of the world around me? It shouldn't just be the case that, that I've told you something or you've read something in a textbook and therefore it must be true. You need to be thinking all the time, can I, can I relate this to what the world actually seems to do? Physics lives and dies by its ability to really be a good description of the universe that we see. Uh, so we're going to be going the whole way through with these ideas in mind, um, using everyday examples as much as we can along the way, things that we can, we can relate to very easily. One of the examples we're going to be continually coming back to uh, is a car. A car is something that most of us have had some experience with. We've, uh, we've seen cars, most of us have ridden in cars, we get some ideas about how they operate. And it turns out they're not a bad example of, of motion, of things like sound and other waves, um, of electricity and magnetism, and even light. For example, how the, the lights at the front work or the mirrors that allow you to look behind. Uh, so these are going to be very good examples for us. Uh, before we get into uh, the specifics of this particular module, there's a couple of general ideas we should be thinking about. One is that we're going to be doing some mathematics, and that's going to involve us using some symbols to represent various quantities, and we've need, we need to pay attention the whole time to using the right symbol, to understanding what symbol stands for what quantity. Occasionally we'll be using maybe some unusual symbols. Uh, Greek letters, for example, are often used, and you need to become quite familiar with those. Another thing that we'll be doing is using uh, quantities that have units attached to them. And it's really important that we get the right units and we understand what units they're going to be. And we've actually got some options when it comes to units, but we're going to restrict ourselves uh, in this subject, as physicists like to do. Um, so for example, if we're discussing the length of something, some distance, uh, we've got some options for units there. For example, we might uh, want to measure in inches. That might be one way of measuring a distance. Or maybe we want to measure in, in miles. Or maybe we'd like to measure things in meters. There's different ways of measuring. Um, in fact, we're going to be restricting ourselves to measuring things in units of meters. And the symbol that we'll use for that uh, will be a lowercase m whenever we're discussing units. Uh, another thing we might like to measure is, is the mass. Now, what units can we measure mass in? Uh, a less known unit, although some people still use it, is to measure mass in units of slugs. Um, or perhaps if we've got some very, very large mass, we might like to measure it in units of tons. But one that we're probably reasonably familiar with is the unit of the kilogram. And in fact, it's this unit here, the kilogram, that we're going to be using during this subject. And its symbol, of course, will be kg. And finally, time is another one that we'll be using quite a lot. Time we could measure, for a long time, we could measure things in units of years, or, or maybe even we could measure it in minutes. But our standard unit of time for this unit here is going to be the second which we will illustrate graphically with a lowercase s. For those of you who are interested in different kinds of units, and there's quite a lot of history and fascinating um, developments that have happened in units, the system that we're going to be using here is called the SI system, the International System of Units. It's kind of a version of the metric system. Now, we're going to start off in, in this uh, very first module looking at motion. We're going to look at how things move, how we can describe how they move, and why they move a certain way. What are the causes of the motion that we see? 
We look up in the sky and we see birds flying. We look down at the ground and we see someone walking past or riding a bicycle. We'd like to be able to understand how to describe their motion and to understand why the motion is the way that it is. Um, that's what we're going to be starting with. Now we're going to be using some, uh, some, uh, some quite detailed terms here, things like velocity and speed. Um, and I'd like you to think about what those terms mean. And this gets us to another really important aspect of science, and that is the social aspect of science. We don't typically come up with these ideas in a vacuum. We don't do them just by ourselves. Scientists all around the world uh, communicate. They get together. They interact. And we need you to do exactly the same thing while you're studying this particular unit. We need you to use the discussion forum to get to know the other students that you're studying with. So we really encourage you uh, at the end of this particular topic to go onto the forum, meet the people that are there, and as a particular sort of icebreaker discussion, discuss what you think the difference might be between velocity and speed. You might even know some of the terms vectors or scalars. They might help you describe what you think is the difference between uh, velocity and speed. So get onto that forum, have a bit of a chat around it, think about some of the ideas that you might think physics is interesting about. Again, start some discussions. And we'll get back at the next topic uh, and start describing how things move.